Paul is a, oh, we're recording. I was about to say something mean about Just Ron like Paul. Paul. <laughs> <sighs> He's a wormy dude. <laughs> it's gonna be like a million thumbs down. <laughs> I didn't say it. Don't, don't hate me. So, David. I kind of start that all the time, don't I? Like the yeah, first part of the always. video. It's like, so, David, mm-hmm. what's up? I've been reading philosophy. <laughs> what a way to be excited in the beginning. I've been reading a lot of Martin Heidegger. He would have been a great philosopher if he hadn't have been a Nazi. I mean, you know, it kind of. Except for the. Except for the Nazi. Minor part. detail. You know what's weird, too, though? He never apologized for it. He lived for some time after World War II, and he, he never officially left the party. They just left him alone and just kind of continued going on. It's. It's really strange. He had some cool ideas, but, you know, Nazism, not cool. I don't approve. <laughs> Thumbs up for Nazism, you yeah. got approved. It's not a popular position to take. Oh, Lord. Oh, man, my hair looks good today. A mind melt. <laughs> if we were to mind meld, it would be like the Darren. It... <laughs> that would be scary. Yeah. Uh, so, how you been doing? What's been going on? Been teaching. Playing teaching. lots of Minecraft, as usual. Still trying to figure out a way to bring Minecraft into the classroom, but I don't have a good strategy for that yet. So, Painting some Warhammer figures. Trying to nerd it up, as usual. I found my Sonic the Hedgehog comic book collection in my closet. Yeah! Some of those things are worth money. Those early Sonic the Hedgehog comics published by Archie, the issue number zero, if you have those in good condition, those can be like several hundred bucks. I'm very tempted to go to Just eBay. in case you happen to have one in your closet, <clears throat> be sure to send it our way. Now, I was going <laughs> to save them for my son to give to him later, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> I would really like a go-kart. <laughs> Here, Daddy, here's your comic book back. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I would be angry. How are you, Jared? I have been good. Um, work, lots of work. Playing. And uh, playing some Star Trek Online. And being really noob at it. Noob. <clears throat> I am. Um, I, I don't know my way around the game yet or all mm. the mechanics, so I'm still learning it. But uh, mm. there's that, and then I've been playing the first Transformers game, the War for Cybertron. Yeah, those look so That's good. That's actually really good. If, like, if, I, if my Xbox hadn't eaten its own face, I would totally have bought those, both of those Transformers. Games. Well, the, the last one was uh, recently on Steam, not the new one, but uh, War for Cybertron. It was like seven really? fifty. Oh, so I went ahead and picked it up, and I played like one level, and I love it. I just haven't <laughs> had enough time to play more of it. When I get around to upgrading my laptop and putting that RAM in it, I might play more games because I miss games. Games are cool. I've just been a dad and a teacher lately, not a gamer. There ain't nothing wrong with being a dad. See, as a dad myself, I just do Legos. Yeah. Shameless prop for Legos. Yeah, Auden's not quite ready for Legos, but I've talked to the wife, and I think we're going to do a Duplo set for Christmas. Yeah, start start him off with the, the Mega Blocks of the Duplo, and mm-hmm. then when he hits about three or four, depending on his on his competency level, yeah, what he's capable of, you know, it's then funny. you can go ahead and move Another thing we're going to have to consider, too, though, is that we'll have another one due in November, November 25th, sure. so it'd probably be a good idea for me to wait a little bit longer so I can introduce it to both of them at the same time and not have to worry about one playing with one and then, like, the other one choking on it. So it probably would be better to wait. It'll, although it'll break my heart to do that. My wife, you, I think you'll be interested in this. I want to know your opinion. My wife absolutely positively does not want to buy my son any Legos that can build into something specific. She hates that. She hates that you build things like... The X-Wing fighter, or you build... like talking about sets. Exactly. She doesn't want him to have any sets. She just wants him to have blank, generic Legos that he would... There there ain't nothing wrong with that, but I think, especially when you're starting off with a young child, Mm -hmm. is start them off with the set, because you're allowing them to see the mechanics of how things are really working first. Yeah. Then you can start doing just blank, you know, here's here's 600 blocks, build something. You know, because then at least that way you're spurring the child's imagination, and they know what to do with it. And it's funny because the reason she feels this way, I have to justify her for a little bit because I don't want everybody to think, oh, my wife, she's so, she's so random. It's not like that. She's, ba- she's been a nanny and she's 
done a lot of babysitting and nannying for kids, and she sees like children have these Lego sets, and they have absolutely no ability to build from imagination. They only know how to do sets. So she wants to avoid that, which I kind of respect, but I don't think you necessarily have to completely remove sets. Well, I think you you got to stop looking over there first. It's me. The camera's over here. It's me. I'm over there. I'm Wait, what you don't going. see over here is that there's a screen that shows us exactly what's going on right now. Hey, David. And David's going crazy hey. by himself. Hey, David. I think you're cool. I don't care what those other people say about you. I'm all right with you. <laughs> Chin up, buddy. <clears throat> yeah, chin up. Yeah. I got like two. Uh, <laughs> you know, something else is kind of interesting, too. Do you mind if I get really philosophical for a minute? I, uh, how deep will this rabbit hole go? Kind of deep. A little bit. I'll try to keep it... I'll try to keep it <sighs> semi short Don't hurt my brain. All right. So, I told you about... I've been reading The Nazi, right? Martin Heidegger. And Heidegger believed that the way we think of being is wrong. Western thought has completely screwed up being. We don't give precedence to the mystery of being. We only think about compartmentalizing being, commodifying being. And this is dualistic thinking. That when we think about something that we see in the world, it's either something or it isn't something. We don't break it into constituent parts. We don't consider the multiple dimensions of its being, right? So, for Heidegger, I would love to have known what he thought about Legos. Because Legos are compartmentalized being that you create into things, that you create into different strata of being, but it also could have been used to illuminate the mystery of being, that you can also break them apart and reassemble them, and I don't know, I've just been really fascinated with this idea, that for Heidegger, everything we've ever done in Western thought is completely and utterly wrong, and when you look at the modern world and you look at technology, you can see iterations of this, and you can see how technology actually messes with your perception of the world. And, I don't know, I'm going to stop now, but I, just, I love this idea. I've been babbling about it like a little girl. <laughs> Being! And I'm like a little, I'm like, if the Heidegger was alive today, and he offered a talk, I would be like a 16-year-old girl at a Beatles concert. I'd be like, pursuit of being! Ah! <laughs> this stuff's wow. cool to me, man. Wow. And when you mix this stuff with video games and Legos... It's like candy. That was deep. It is, isn't it? That was real deep. Yeah. Do you need a couple? <laughs> you gotta take yourself out now. <laughs> so what do you think? Do you think Legos expand our understanding of being, or do you think it only recompartmentalizes and commodifies our I think it expands, of... and the reason why I do is because what you're doing with <laughs> Legos is, is actually forcing creative thinking. Mm. So you're not forcing yourself to stay in a bind, but you're actually expanding beyond because you're forcing yourself to do more. Mm. So I I will have to say that it's an expansion as opposed to being boxed in. And it's funny because... I like being outside the box. One of my favorite quotes from Heidegger, and this is the last I'm going to talk about Heidegger because otherwise I'm just going to completely hijack your video, ha. Huh? But, um, <laughs> thumbs down. Um, <laughs> he said that the more you understand an object... The more you approach it, the more you learn about it, the less you know. Because you do what's called unconcealing. To understand to know an object in one dimension is to not know it in its other dimensions. It becomes even less available to you the more you approach it. It's kind of a strange idea, isn't it? Purple monkey dishwasher. <laughs> Anybody that wants to invent a purple monkey dishwasher, we thought of it first. Well, I wonder what kind of dishes monkeys would need to have washed. They'd be purple. Monkey dishes. They'd be pur purple monkey dishes. This is you know like the dishes you see when you go to like a kid's store, mm. and they have the plates that look like a monkey's face with the ears? Yeah. It's something like that. You know what I just realized? In these videos when we do this, we do what Sips from the Oxcast calls Lego talk. Uh, Lego talk is when you were kids, and... You invited your friends over to play, and you're playing with Legos. What would end up happening is, is you would really want to focus on what you're building, right? And so, but you would also want to talk to your friend. So he would engage in what Sips calls Lego talk, where you're just speaking incongruent, in. Yeah, it's like you're in two dimensions. Oh, you're recording. <laughs> <laughs> 
Welcome back. Hi. We had a mishap with batteries. You're a battery. So, we're back. And what were we talking about? I think we were talking about philosophy again, but we'll, we can just we can just leave that be because it probably needs to die. Because I'm sure I'm alienating. We need a lot to, we need to kill the the philosophy because philosophy ain't working here. Um, <laughs> I kicked it out long ago. Get out of here! Go away. You're not the only person who's killed philosophy. Well, only today. Hmm. Otherwise, I'd be like, yeah, we'd talk about it for a week if you want, but not today. So, David. Yes. I had this dream last night that Will Wheaton and I formed an Ace of Bass cover band, but we only played Duran Duran songs, and uh, we called ourselves D Billy D and his Wheaties. I saw the sign, and it whipped it real good, <laughs> and it whipped it real good. That's Devo. <laughs> That's Devo. <laughs> No. We just talked about three incredibly lame bands and we came in the space. We just of like, like combine everything together. We're like, yeah, let's take those bands huh. and put them in a pot. If you were actually able to mash all those together, I saw the sign. No, I saw the view to a kill and whipped it. Whipped there we go. Good. That's how you could force all. Of this I saw together. a view to a kill and whipped it. Good. <laughs> I would like to be in a Duran Duran cover band. I would dye my hair all sorts of crazy colors. All sorts of crazy. Mm. So, ladies and gentlemen, so we, we have discussed trying to do this more regularly mm. because we did a six month period of no videos. Well, it was a crazy six months. I know. You know, uh, yeah. I haven't posted a video to my channel probably in longer just well, because I've been so it. busy. I don't know what to talk about. I've been doing my science fiction. Why don't you see, well, do more of those, or you know, just pick up the book that you just finished reading, especially for your class, and say, "Here's my thoughts on this book." I would love to do a Here's commentary on the Bible. Up. I would I don't know if I watch your commentary on the Bible. <laughs> the story, You'd be like, be like, this doesn't make sense. The story no, that doesn't make sense. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah is especially interesting to me now that I'm reading through it again. Because no one ever talks about the fact that during the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot offered his daughters as a sacrifice to the to the gang outside his door that wanted to like, you know, victimize the angels. It's a really odd thing. It's you just people just don't really talk about that very much. It's just kinda like Let's just talk about the city being destroyed. That's more interesting. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Exactly. <laughs> mm. yeah, and then Lot's wife turned around to see the things behind. Yeah, and she got turned to a pillar of salt. And I didn't realize this either in this read-through of the Bible. Lot had children with his own daughters. And they and they branched off into separate tribes. And it, 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 it delivers this information, and it doesn't exactly condemn them for it. But he had children with his own daughters. They drugged him with wine, and they had children. It's very interesting. What version of the Bible are you This is New Living Translation. I'm pretty sure it's a pretty standard translation. Look it up, though. Go to the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's a lot, and what happens afterward. They find this cave, kind of far away from Sodom and Gomorrah, after it's been destroyed, and his daughters are afraid they will never marry because so many people have just been killed in the destruction of the cities, and so they get their father drunk and can see children with him. It's very interesting. So we're going to jump off that subject, too. <laughs> that's, that's two subjects I'm kicking David off of automatically. I need to get back on my meds. Philosophy and Bible. Mm. <laughs> I need to get back on my medication. This is what I'm like on medication. Dare, dare I ask what medication? It's a little off, actually. It explains a few things. Yeah, it does explain a few things. <laughs> my goal in life is to be on an offensive t-shirt. <laughs> it's not good enough unless it offends David me. was here yeah. taking over your shirt. David hates everyone. David hates everyone. Well, there we go. That's new. That's a, the name. I think I'll name this video David Hates Everyone. Yeah, or David says uncomfortable things about the things that we love. Da David alienates all. That's what we'll call this one. Mario's a communist. I'm trying to think of a communist song that we could mix with the Mario theme. I think I'm we can think of a couple. I'm trying to think. I think the the Soviet the Soviet Union's national anthem was like do 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 do. Sorry, do, right, do, so you ready? Do. So you ready? Yeah. 
It would be a good remix. We, we got a problem with that one. <laughs> I think it'll hit the Billboard top ten. So, so you're saying Mario is a communist? There's some very interesting symbolism in Mario that's suspect. I mean, think about it. Mario's a plumber, right? His primary antagonist is King Koopa. King Koopa representing the social order both of the monarchy and you could also argue the bourgeoisie. And red is the primary symbol, is the primary color motif that goes through Mario. And you can even bring the Goombas into this because the Goombas are almost like this weird kind of dual metaphor for the, uh, the proletariat also being trampled under by the working man of Mario. It, 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 the, the metaphor gets split and goes in different directions, but you can argue that there's something really weird going on in Mario. Oh, I'm not the first person to make this argument. Google oh, it. You'll see I'm not crazy. He, oh, <laughs> he's not crazy. Nothing sacred to me. <laughs> That's why I enjoy making videos with you, David. Mm. So, again, we're going to start being more active in making videos. And, uh... Are we going to be P90X active? Because I don't know if I'm ready for that. I'm not Paul Ryan. More thumbs down. I'm <laughs> <laughs> hitting everything I shouldn't talk so about. So while I'm thinking about it, I do want to introduce a new thing to our videos. Since we are starting a new, I want to add a new feature, which we're going to call the question of the week, which will ask a question to you, the, the folks, and hopefully you can answer... I'm always trying to not mess up my down below finger there. And then um So what's the question of the week? We haven't week? thought of one yet, so you need to think of one quick while I finish this. And yeah, then not, in not response, me on the spot I also want to ask people that are watching our video to ask us a question, mm. which we will try to answer the next week. And if there's no questions because mm. people don't like us, then that's fine. I'm cool. Do you want me to venture a sample question? Go ahead, Sam. We're going to do a sample question. Okay, I'm going to try one. If you don't like it, you can edit it out. So, uh, I've been seeing a lot this week of a game that's been put out that you get to run a campaign, and you get to, like, try to run for president. I think it's a very social game. I'm not sure I'm not completely filled in on the, on, filled in on the details of this. This is informed of a pretty, you know, solid tradition. Bioshock is very political. Um, you could even argue that a lot of MMOs are very political. I'm sure there's a lot of political stuff going through World of Warcraft. So how about for a sample question this week? Do you really want your video games to be more political? Do you want to open that door? Why or why not? I think we can stick with that question. <laughs> I like it because I can't think of any other ones. Yay. So that is our sample question. So um, if you want to answer the question, down below, go ahead. And uh, whatever we think is the coolest answer. I'm just holding up Matt we'll Barnes. Matt Barton's Vintage Games for some strange reason. Free plug for Matt Barton. <laughs> I love you, Matt. You're the man. He he's liked got, my comment he's on Twitter. he got like two, day. I think, of your books. Is it two? No, I have. I don't have two Matt Barton books. I have something by Matt Barton. I have something by Tom Bissell. He wrote Extra Lives, which is a commentary on the sociology of gaming. And Ian Bogost, uh, Unit Operations. Free plugs for all of you. Yeah, I know. Ian Bogost, is, Ian Bogost liked it and favorited something I wrote on Twitter the other day. I asked him if anybody in digital humanities was doing anything with gaming and philosophy, the connection between the two, and I said because Digi Heidegger would be an amazing Pokemon, and he favorited it. It was like, it was like going to a Beatles concert, locking eyes with Paul McCartney, and him saying, I know you exist. Just imagine that for a minute. <laughs> That's deep. I know. Ian Bogost is like... I just... I kind of get teary-eyed when I think about him sometimes. So, <laughs> we're, we're having a special moment, apparently. David is. So, anyway, we're going to end our video on that note. And, uh... Take it easy. I always feel like somebody's, somebody's watching me.